Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mormon Cast. My name is Matt Worley, and I'm your host. And I'm Brandon Chatham. And as you can tell, we're both on the couch and ready for another movie review. Um, today's review is on a movie called God's Army 2, States of Grace. For a while, <laughs> I had lost faith in the LDS movie-making machine. But Matt, all the movies we've seen for the last, what, several months have been just so... Crap. Yes. Yeah. They have been. <laughs> God's except, Army. Except for there's a couple that you liked in there's, there. But... There's been a couple that were all right. But this one, God's Army, States of Grace, has clearly like like renewed my faith in the LDS movie-making machine. Yes. If more... LDS filmmakers could get a handle on the type of stuff that that Richard Dutcher's doing with with this kind of film and this media. Um, it could really, you know, change the way people uh, go out and view LDS films. Completely. I mean, you could get away from, like, the cheesy ideas like, you know, Home Teacher and Mobsters and Mormons and go with the more reality, more real, more emotionally driven stuff. And good stuff. Um... God's Army 2 States of Grace was uh, sent to us by the people at the uh, Main Street uh, movie company. Good company. They, they've done uh, a couple films. They've been really good. And I think this one has been uh, probably the best. The best I've seen. I want to go back to what Matt said. All people that make Mormon movies should go talk to... What's that guy's name again? Richard Dutcher. Talk to him. Because this movie was fantastic. From the script to the casting... To everything, it was a great movie. Um, I, I started watching it, and I could not be pulled away from the movie. Uh, I, I'm as first of all, I'm very surprised that these guys sent us a movie. Yeah. If they've seen any of our podcasts and any of our movie reviews, yeah. they know that we're insanely critical. Yeah. And the fact that they sent us a screener before it even re released, before people can start buying it, before we just pull it apart, is amazing. So thank you for sending that, and it tells a lot that you have a lot of confidence in your movie. Yep. And well done, because it was a fantastic movie. Mm -hmm. um, I laughed, and <laughs> I literally cried. Yep. Um, it was a fantastic movie. Yeah, there's nothing like a film that, that can draw you in enough to, to actually make you experience emotions. Um, seriously to me, there's, there's not enough of that today. Um, there's there's music that can have that effect, you know. There's music songs that can make you feel down, and then other songs that make you feel up. And if you can get both of those things together, like in like a film, and take someone on that emotional roller coaster, you've got you've got a great product. You've got a winning film. And 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 States of Grace, to me, clearly did that. Um, and another thing, it it took the church. It showed the church. As it is, it took it and showed it as a real thing, as this is who we are, this is what we're like. Um, and the look of the film, the look of the film was, was a film, it was a, it was a feature. Um, I showed a buddy of mine uh, a trailer, the trailer of it, and he was watching, and at the very end he looked at me and said, that looks like a real movie. And I'm like, it is. It, it's it's <laughs> a real movie. He's, he's not a member of the church. And uh, we're gonna try and get together uh, a big group of people, and we're gonna we're gonna watch uh, States of Grace. And I plan on in, inviting my buddy and a few other people I know. Uh, but this movie really has so many things. There's lots of twists and turns, things that you don't expect, yeah. things you do not expect, yeah. but then you kind of expect, but then you d they just surprise you. Fantastic. Yeah, it was clearly entertaining. This is the kind of movie that you think about the characters after the movie ends. I mean, I'm still thinking about almost as if these characters are real and what they're going through right now after that the movie is over because I saw like a little snippet of their life and now I'm wondering, they're back home from their missions and uh, anyways, it's cheesy. But my wife, she talks about her TV shows like the people are real. <laughs> like Johnny this and Billy that, they did this. I'm like, baby, it's a TV show. But that's totally how I felt about this movie is I after I walked away I was still thinking about these characters mm -hmm. wondering what's gonna happen next anyways so. I think to kind of wrap it all up uh, 
give you a, a little synopsis of the film, which we should have done at the beginning, but Good thing. you know, we've, we've dragged you through this far now. Here's what the film's about. Um, two main characters, two missionaries. One of them is like four weeks, starts off, he's four weeks from going home, getting really trunky, um, doesn't feel like he's been doing a lot of good or, or anything. He just wants to get home. Um, and all of a sudden, a series of events start happening in his life that happen around him and his companion and, like, two other characters and how all these things, like, they all work through all these things together. Um, really, like, it's a, really an interesting story. I mean, it doesn't sound like much when I explain it like that, but there's so many things that go on and make you think, like, there's so many things in this movie that reminded me of my mission that... Um, events and things that happen to, to the main characters that really hit home with me. Um, I, I really think it's it's probably one of the best, one of the best Elias films out there. Yeah. I mean, you know, Legacy, Rocks Everything. The Testament. And, uh, the Testament. All right. Those are awesome movies. But uh, as for like an independent, not from the church film, this one is great. There was, uh, they touch subjects and... Uh... What's the word? Uh, I guess it's subjects, uh, subject matter that you wouldn't expect to see in this type of film. And they do it in such a way that it pulls a piece of your heart into it. And uh, it makes you want to be a better person. Mm -hmm. There's this one scene. Um, are we going over in time? Do we have time? I think we have time. Quick time. There's this one scene where they have these two individuals that aren't members of the church. They barely even know that these guys are missionaries. And they sit down at, a, at the dinner table at the missionary's home, apartment, which is kind of different, but you got to watch the movie to understand. And one of the missionaries asks one of the people, one of the guests, or one of the visitors, if they would say the blessing on the food. And it got me thinking, when was the last time that I invited people to my house that weren't members of the church, and I asked them to say the blessing on the food in my house, knowing that they would say the prayer in a completely different way than maybe I was yeah. brought up to. And it, it got me thinking, and it made me want to uh, be a better person, and that we're all praying to the same God, and it's not, my prayer is not going to be more important than theirs is. And that's kind of just got me thinking, and there's so many different principles in there that mm -hmm. made me want to be a better person if I'm not repeating myself too many times. Anyways, two thumbs up. Yeah, good job. Two guys. thumbs up. Two thumbs up, and uh, hooray for all the parallels in the story, too. Yes. And That's something else that you've got to see to believe. Um, thank you all for joining us on another episode of Mormon Cast. Uh, our next movie review will be on a movie called Suits on the Loose. <laughs> yeah. Looking forward to that one. Oh, boy. Well, anyway, um, please feel free to visit our website, mormoncast.org. Uh, shoot me an email at whirly.matt at gmail.com. And thank you for watching Mormon Cast, and we'll see you again next week. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Matt. See ya.